Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides Upcoming Changes video. My name is Dan and today I'll be going over all the upcoming changes that are planned for patch 9.21. Everything that I mention here can be found in the PBU right now or on the Riot dev board. But please do keep in mind that nothing is set in stone and changes can be made before 9.21 hits the live servers. We'll make sure to keep you guys updated with our patch rundown very soon, so click that sub button if you want to see that. Also, there are a few notable changes which will target get some of your favorite champions like Garen, Shaco, Master Yi, Kane, and many more, so stay tuned for that. Also, guys, today's question of the day is what do you think about the four rework champions from last patch? I mean, Garen and Shaco seem to be doing pretty well, but Victor and Ivern are left in the dust. Let us know your answers in the comments down below. But before we get started, I want you to click the link below and check out our website ProGuides.com. ProGuides is the best proven way to improve at League of Legends, and we post guide videos like this one every single day. We've been doing a lot more advanced content recently, and I'm sure you won't regret signing up. Also, guys, we have an effective coaching feature, which lets you play and get coached by a pro. Trust me, guys, you don't want to miss out on this, because your friends will be absolutely stunned at how much better you become at League of Legends. Now, with that being said, let's jump right into the video. Alright, to start things off, we have four new skins that are hitting the Rift next patch. First up, we have the beautiful Bewitching Misfortune. Then we have the pricey Prestige Edition Bewitching Misfortune. Next up, we got a really badass Count Cassidy skin. And lastly, we have the Spooky Witch's Brew Blitzcrank. These four skins look so good, guys, and I can't wait to purchase all four of them when they're released. Also, as an avid Cassidy player, I'm so excited for this new skin because he hasn't received one for 1,459 days. Also, keep this as our little secret, but I might just switch from being an Ezreal main to a Misfortune main after looking at that splash art. Alright, moving on, here is a quick sneak peek on every single champion that will be buffed, nerfed, or reworked. Pause the video now to take a closer look at them. Buffs. Kane, Victor, Kogma, Lulu, Warwick, Maokai. Nerfs. Pike, Garen, Shaco. Bug fixes. Master Yi. Now let's move on to the balance changes, starting with the nerfs. Pike. Pike has long been one of the most broken supports in the game for quite some time and was long overdue for a nerf. He's placed in our S plus tier for almost the entire season, and he's finally receiving some changes in patch 9.21. Firstly, his HP per level will be lowered from 100 to 90, and his passive gray health will be reduced from 30 to 81 percent to 20 to 50 percent of damage taken. This is a great nerf for Pike, and it'll give us some more room for counterplay when playing against him. One of the biggest issues with Pike was that it's almost impossible to punish him for mistakes. Whenever you catch or heavily damage him during the laning phase, it becomes really hard for your trades to last because he can just heal it all back up with his gray health or just straight up tank the burst with aftershock. However, now that his survivability has been reduced, it'll become a lot easier to just kill him whenever you catch him out of position. One thing that does remain as a problem is the gold generation from his ultimate, but we'll see if further changes need to be made next patch. Shaco Shaco received a mini rework at the start of patch 9.20, and his win rate, play rate, and ban rate have topped the charts in most ranks. His first clear was just way too powerful, and good Shaco players were able to transition their instant two-level lead towards other parts of the map. For patch 9.21, Shaco will have his jack-in-the-box duration nerfed from 60 seconds to 40 seconds. This means that his clear speed will be reduced so that it's similar to the pre-rework Shaco. I'm glad that the balance team decided to nerf his clear speed instead of his damage because honestly, I'm enjoying playing the new rework and not gonna lie, that first clear is really broken. However, this nerf is also going to impact support Shaco significantly. Although Shaco is traditionally played as a jungler, our analysts believe that he's much more effective as a support this patch, but we'll see if this changes in patch 9.21. Garen. Next up, we have Garen. Garen also received a mini rework at the start of patch 9.20, and his win rate, play rate, and ban rate have also topped the charts in most ranks. Garen traditionally has a low win rate in the higher elos, but an extremely high win rate in the lower ones. However, for the reworked Garen, this clearly isn't the case, and his performance in all ranks is just way too good. For patch 9.20, Garen will have his E base damage per spin lowered from 8 to 24 to 4 to 20. This is a pretty minor nerf, and Garen will still remain a very powerful pick in patch 9.21. He still does a crap ton of damage and has a huge amount of survivability, so enjoy playing him next patch. Now that the nerfs are out of the way, let's move on to the buffs. Maokai. First up on the buffs, we have Maokai. Maokai has been somewhat of a forgotten champion recently, but he's finally receiving some love from the balance team in 9.21. Firstly, his W, Twisted Advance, will have its mana cost lowered from 60 to 80 to 60 flat, and the damage on this ability has been buffed by 20 at all ranks. 
Next up, his ultimate, Nature's Grasp, will have its root duration buffed from 0.6 to 2.4 seconds to 0.8 to 2.6 seconds. These are both really solid buffs from Maokai, but it won't make him magically OP. Tank top laners tend to struggle in the current meta due to things like Conqueror and the high damage from Bruiser, so Maokai will likely continue to struggle in 9.21. Kane. Next up, we have some buffs for Kane. Kane is actually one of the best solo queue junglers in the game right now, but he's looking to become even stronger next patch. His Q, Reaping Slash, will have its damage increased from 60 to 140 to 75 to 155. However, as compensation, the damage his Q does to monsters will be lowered from 55 to 44, which overall means that nothing changed for his farming. He'll still do the same amount of damage to monsters, but now he'll do much more damage towards champions. I'm I'm a really big fan of this change because it'll help Kane close out those early ganks a lot better and duel the enemy jungler. Warwick Also for jungle, we have a buff coming for Warwick. Although Warwick isn't necessarily a weak champion, he's still not the best either. For patch 9.21, Warwick will receive two buffs which will help him out a ton. Firstly, his Q will have its damage increased from 6 to 8% of their max HP to 6 to 10% of their max HP. Next up, his W will grant him an additional 20% attack speed during the early game, but it'll scale up towards the same 110% during the mid to late game. These buffs are aimed at increasing his effectiveness during the early game, while also helping him kill his targets faster with the bonus damage on his Q. However, one thing I am not excited about are the inevitable bugs that are going to come with these changes. Whenever the balance team decides to change anything about Warwick, it always adds on a ton of bugs for some reason. Please work on that spaghetti! Victor Victor received a mini rework at the start of patch 9.20, and his results have not been the same as Garen and Shaco. Instead of skyrocketing his stats to the top of the tier list, he instead has been hovering around the B tier for mid lane and is just a tiny bit stronger than before. For patch 9.21, the balance team are looking to increase his strength in the meta and are buffing his Q damage from 50 to 110 to 60 to 110. This is a decent buff which will help Victor during the laning phase, but he'll still face the same problems as before. His augments are extremely overpriced and his power spikes are heavily delayed because of this. However, one problem that his buff might bring is Victor top becoming very powerful again. The top lane meta is filled with melee champions and kleptomancy has been rising in popularity due to Naguri from the World Championships. If this trend keeps going, then Victor might start seeing a lot more top lane due to this 10 damage buff on his Q. We'll make sure to keep you updated with the meta change, so click that sub button to be notified of patch analysis next week. Kog'Maw Kog'Maw has been another forgotten champion in the recent meta and is receiving some love from the balance team in patch 9.21. Firstly, his Q will have its damage increased from 80 to 280 to 90 to 290. In addition to this, his E will have its damage increased from 60 to 240 to 75 to 255. This is a decent buff for Kogma as both an AD carry and an AP poke mage. The extra 25 combined burst from these abilities will help him keep up with his meta counterparts and help him trade more effectively during the laning phase. However, due to the bottom lane meta being so burst focused with champs like Kai'Sa, Lucian, Caitlyn, Draven, and Zaya, it's very unlikely that Kog'Maw will make a triumphant return into the meta. He'll likely continue to struggle in the bottom lane and will be a sub-optimal pick. Lulu Next up, we have Kog'Maw's favorite support, Lulu, receiving a buff as well. For patch 9.21, Lulu will have her E shield increased from 80 to 220 to 80 to 240, and her E damage increased from 80 to 200 to 80 to 240. This change pretty much only affects her mid to late game, and they're honestly not that big. However, combine these buffs with the Kog'Maw buffs, and you pretty much have an insanely strong hyper carry duo. If you can somehow magically reach the late game as Kog plus Lulu bot lane, then it'll be a heck of a lot stronger than before. But but that is assuming that you survive the laning phase. So in summary, Lulu will be stronger than before, but the changes will not make too much of an impact on her stance in the meta. Master Yi Lastly for the changes, we have a quick bug fix coming for Master Yi. Now, we're not exactly sure which bug the balance team is referring to, however, we can assume that it's the bug which, in short, reduces Master Yi's damage due to Rage Blade not properly stacking with his abilities and auto attacks. If this is the case, then this will definitely be a noticeable buff for Master Yi, and you will surely feel the difference in-game. Being able to stack Rage Blade properly will mean that you can melt your opponents even faster than before, so make sure to get those bands ready. That's it for our upcoming changes video for patch 9.21. Let us know which change you're most excited about in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed watching this video, then please please hit that like and sub button. Also, make sure to check out ProGuys.com if you want to see huge improvements to your rank right now. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Good luck in your next few games. I'll see you out on the Rift.